Hi guys, uh, first things first, I just want to say thanks for the overwhelmingly positive response I received for the previous series uh, videos uh, I did. Some were more popular than others, but generally they, uh, they were really quite well received. Secondly, I just want to send everybody uh, the best wishes for the start of this new, new year and just to say that I hope everybody is safe and well. Okay, I've been through sort of the previous clips looking at the comments, particularly those asking for help. So I'm going to make a few short clips and hopefully answer some of the most common issues. So for this first video, I'm just going to show uh, about setting up a downloaded uh, Visual Pinball 10 table, uh, the back glass and how to position the corner DMD on the back glass, which I did mention in an earlier video uh, and was asked to demonstrate, but unfortunately never, never got round to. So to start off, uh, I'm going to assume that you have already installed Visual Pinball X. The latest version is 10.6. Install the full install and not the beta as I showed in a previous uh, video. Um, but once that's already installed, uh, you can download that from gamex.com by the way. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description along with this text so you can read through afterwards. If you haven't already got it, it uh, you need to download that anyway. And uh, I've shown how to set that up in another one of my clips already. Okay, so um, I'm actually making a full-size machine here, a full, a 40-inch play field uh, with a 32-inch back glass from scratch, and I'm setting up many of the tables which aren't formatted for this size or this format uh, uh, straight out of the box. Um, I'm actually going to use Doctor Who as an example on how to set this up, which you can you can use any other table, but the Doctor Who file is one that, uh, that is very easy to explain, and. Uh, um, I assume that you've downloaded the table, the Doctor Who table, downloaded the Doctor Who back glass, and also downloaded the and Doctor Who ROM, which is placed in the VPIN main uh, ROMs folder already. On the co new computer that I'm using here, the GPU is a, uh, an NVIDIA 1060, GTX 1060 with 3 gigabytes of memory, which uh, is more than powerful to run the software that we want to run here. Uh, the screens are actually set up screen one, that's the 14 playfield screen, um, directly to the HDMI on the back of the GPU there. Uh, now the 32 inch back glass screen is connected to the DVI, although through an HDMI cable through a DVI converter because uh, there's only one HDMI supported on this card, uh, which is pretty common uh, with cards around nowadays. Uh, incidentally, just swapping the cables around in the GPU ports is the only way to change screen assignments. Uh, swap screen 1 with screen 2. Can't be done in Windows, and you, so you must decide at this point which way, which screen you want as number 1 and which screen you want as number 2 as far as Windows uh, sees the hardware. So as you can see, I've got screen 1 vertically aligned on the left with screen to horizontal and to the upper right of screen number one. Moving to the pinball table, I have a, a Doctor Who uh, VPX table file and DB2S back glass file in the visual pinball tables folder already. The ROM is also in the visual pinball pin mains ROMs folder. Now if I run the table directly, It'll take just a moment to load. Okay, so uh, we can see what we have here. As you can see, the play field is at 90 degrees. That's because we've already set our, our screen here to be in portrait mode. As by design, I want it this way. This is the way I want to do it because this is dedicated, going to be dedicated vertical. So you can see the back glass, uh, uh, back glass is okay, and the DMD that should be in the back glass is stuck in the corner over there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're first going to click on the DMD. We can drag it just by clicking it with the mouse. We can drag it wherever we want. Now I'm going to drag it over onto the uh, second screen over here. Now we're, then we're going to right click on it and select uh, show window border. Yeah, as you can see, that show the window border. What that does is allows us to 
uh, resize this window. So we're going to um, resize it until it fits within this square. So if we get it like that and then pull it out, we can get it, get it sort of, it matches roughly where the window would be there. Move it down and then we can, we can pull it up. Okay, so that's roughly the size that we want here. Now in order to get it to remember it, we've got to just move around it a bit. Move it back into the first screen and then just dis uh, right click and again show window border, we'll disable the border. And then we move it again, it will stay in the same size and then move it again and place it where exa exactly where we want it. Now be because we did this, uh, by moving it around and resizing it, opening and closing the border, it'll remember where it is. Before, it, uh, sometimes it would not remember, it back in the corner again when you start again. <coughs> okay, click back on the main screen, click escape and uh, click to the editor. Now within the editor, this is, this is the editor, now we're going to click on the back glass option here and options, options if it's not open, it open this window here. And these parameters, these are the parameters that we want to change to get it to change from the, the format it was used in a desktop or a landscape format into, into this vertical format here. So, move on through my notes. Um, now, if, I'm just going to tell you, if you want to better understand what each of these parameters do, you can hit F6 here. And it'll run the table, but allow you by using the uh, the shift keys, the nudge keys, the arrow keys, to move the table around so that you can see what what this parameter does when you move it. But basically, I'm I'm very I'm familiar with with what each parameter does anyway, and so and I find that doing this is much much more uh, uh, much uh, quicker for me. Uh, so this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so the inclination for this table here is going to be zero. I want it to look flat. Um, for this one here, the field of view is going to be 55, the layback is going to be 60, and again if you want to understand what these do, like I said, press F6, play around with the keys and you'll see what happens when you change these parameters. The rotation, because our screen is rotated, is 0. Now I'm going to set X scale to 1, Y scale to 1, Z scale to 1, and then X offset to 0, Y offset to 0, and Z offset to minus 220. Now these these are all my standard parameters every time. I, I, I use, whenever I change a table format, this is what I do. I set these figures here. 0, 55, 60, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and minus 220. Uh, it gives us, that gives us this. If I press play now, then we'll see, we'll see what it looks like. It'll be in the right orientation now, but as you can see, it's not, it's not fitted properly in the screen. So we're just going to change the parameters until we get it exactly how we want it. Quit again to the editor. Okay, now we're going to change, we're only going to change a couple of these, is the X scale, which is this here. It's going to make it slightly bigger. We're going to make it uh, 1.2. That's increasing it by about, oh, sorry, not 11.1.2. Oh, it's get slightly, slightly too small. We're going to get it so it's just outside the box. One, two, five. Okay, that, that'll, that'll do for now. And then we're going to change the Y scale. It's a little bit too big. So we're going to change it to 0.96. Okay, and then I'm going to change the Y offset. The Y offset is how much uh, up and down. I'm going to change that to minus 40. So we're just outside this on there, and we're going to take, see what it takes, uh, uh, what it looks like when we do this. Just uh, for your uh, benefit, a larger number in the X scale obviously increases the width, larger number in the Y scale increases the height, and, and vice versa, of course. Y offset, a minus number, will move it up, and a, a positive number uh, will move it down, and again, similarly for the X. But generally speaking, zero will put it in the middle of very few tables which are not centralized with, with zero. But we're going to play that again very quickly and see what happens. We should be pretty close. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a perfectionist personally, uh, uh, and I'll try and get it pixel perfect. I'll drop back out and move it a couple of pixels up, a couple of pixels down, just to, uh, uh, because uh, uh, that's, that's what I like to do. 
Uh, but it's not, I, I don't think it's necessary here. I can show you here, we've got ex exactly what we wanted. It, it's remembered the, uh, the, the uh, uh, DMD on that screen. The screen here is perfectly um, uh, set out or as near as, as near as I want to do it on this demonstration. And uh, we drop back, escape and drop back down quick to the editor again. And before we do anything, make sure you save and it'll save that setup exactly how we want it. And you can check that by just dropping out of it, uh, the, the program again, VPX, you can drop out and again run, run the table directly. And then when it loads this time, we expect to see the DMD where we want it and the layout exactly how we want it also. There you go, so that's perfect. Right, okay, that's it for this one. I, I hope that helps any of you who were struggling, with, particularly with a DMD layout. Um, but if you get any questions, please ask in the comments. I'll try my best to help out. And I'm gonna do a few more clips, very short and to the point, hopefully, uh, uh, and they're gonna help, uh, help you guys out. Okay, uh, thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, cheers, uh, I'll catch you next time.